but you thought I'd done no layout building this week, didn't you? But no, rest assured, there has been some work done on Dinting Station. So stay tuned and all will be revealed. Good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now that was pretty much the scene that you saw at the end of the last video and the work that I'd achieved at Dinting Station. So you can see but Dinting Station is considerably smaller than what I would actually like it to be. Uh, it is. It needs to be a lot wider to be realistic and considerably longer to be realistic. So the buildings certainly down this side will need to be compromised now that's my basic plan for the main station and these are it's a bit like a 58 in the sense that you've got this central bit which is narrower and then the roof sort of comes along to make it look as if it's the same width from above um, so if i put it up to the edge of that path just there i might be able to fit couple of parking bays there whereas normally they would be just there but you can see it's not going to be possible to do that so again compromises now this is um, a slightly narrower version of the main building and you've got these two sections on either end which I shall build first uh, these flat eight shapes are representing windows and obviously the bit there represents doors okay so there's a lot of doors on the platform side and you've got one main entrance door just there on the um, roadside if you like so i'm thinking maybe just lose a couple of these windows along here because that is there's a lot of windows along there and i just think for the size of building i don't think it's necessary to be honest uh, my scale ver or my um compromised version of the building i mean so i might just do that i'm 3d printing the window frames and which i'll show you in a minute and um, i'm going to build these two end sections first out of one millimeter card then some reinforcements inside that purely because it's going to be a lot easier to cut the window shapes than it would be out of the two millimeter stuff um, and then still be able to fit the window frames inside there. Right, welcome back. I did say I'd show you some of the 3D prints. There's some of the windows for that and the doors. Was, um, the Cura is getting really good now in the sense that you can actually produce um, panelling. So I'm quite pleased about that. There's some of that um, sort of 45 degree angle fencing. And there's one end there. So cut out some parts out of card. I have gone for one millimetre purely because it's easier to cut. And that's the back end of Dintic Station there. So you can see um, that bit there just represents that. Um, what I'm going to do is stick them in initially with a little bit of sellotape behind them and then just dab some super glue around the back just to hold them in. They will need to be sprayed first. So again, some double-sided tape, stick all those pieces to it, and then I can paint those white and then put them in. Um, I am going to be using some brick paper, which is that, and you can, hopefully you can see that's not far off at all, really. So I'm quite pleased about that. So I'm gonna wrap this first. Um, well, get all the windows cut out, that's the first job. Um, make it up into a hole, and I'll show you that, and then I shall wrap that and then put the windows in uh, bit by bit. Right, there we go, that's the first part done. Um, you can see I've put these two millimeter bracing pieces into the corners and then effectively made a floor, um, which is, uh, effect, you know, keeping each of the sides at bay. Um, those four pieces there are all cut to 25 millimeters, which is the height the floor was sitting at. So they also act as a stop 
So when I push down on that, they that can't move. That's down as far as it can go. All right, welcome back. So you can see now I've wrapped that building there. Not worried by that little edge on the top there. That'll get covered by the roof. Um, but you'll also perhaps notice that the windows are covered. So what I've got to do, picking up the scalpel, very gently, and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here, poke it through up to the top and gently down that way and just make a, like an eye shape like that and then down that way and down that way. Uh, it looks a bit of a mess but when you poke it through just I'll put a little dollop of glue behind that, which is this stuff. So I've gone back to using the Cosmic Shimmer. Just a small, tiny little bit behind there. And just smooth that bit off, like so. Just folding it back. Hopefully you can see what I've been up to with that. then it's a case of taking a window and poking that through. Hopefully you can make it, I've tried to make it like a sash window so the top half sort of sticks out a little bit. I've tried to sort of replicate the fact that it, that it would sort of go up and down inside. So what I'm gonna do is just put that gently in there like that. And put a little bit of glue inside there just to hold that in. And just give it a bit of a rub over. Like that. Now obviously it needs the um, window sill putting in and there's a bit that goes around the top. But I can do that. That's... Um, I've got some papers to do that with, specially shaped papers, which come with the kit. All right, just thought I'd show you where we are. So I'll show you the two ends first. So we've got that bit there. All the doors and windows are in. And the window sills. This is the front of the building, but um, to one side. So it'll be behind a load of hedges. You won't see this so much. And these pieces here do seem to stand out quite a lot on the camera, but they're a lot more subtle in reality, I promise you that. And there on the other side, this is platform side. And um, if you look at the real thing, there's three windows and four windows. And I've tried to replicate it as much as I possibly can. And you can clearly see the sash windows there, can't you? That's all 3D printed. And the other one with this uh, funny hole there. It does look, uh, the camera doesn't do it a lot of justice up close, I'm afraid. But another door there and that bit on the other side. But again, once it's in situ, you won't notice this blob here so much. And then the central section, so that's platform side. And uh, the front of the building. And you might notice that they're all glazed as well. Now, okay. So where that's going to go, if that's platform side... That will go just there. So that door is just kind of there, as you can probably make out. And then it's that way, like that. So there's a bigger gap this side than what there is at the front. So next stage now is to uh, make the roofs for these two pieces here. Work out the angle that I need for the roof supports in here so I need to put some triangles in there to give it some support and then make the central roof for that welcome back i've been experimenting i know but anyway roof textures now i could go ahead and use a standard print and they're fine i mean but the one that i found on scale scenes for engage was quite new looking 
and the tiles were quite sort of um, regular, flat. Now, I've 3D printed this. Now, I've, this is the third version of it, and I had to sort of move the tiles a little bit further apart to get any form of definition vertically well at all. But actually, I'm quite pleased with that. I've emphasised the ridges coming down, sort of like that. I'll print off the regular sizes for each of these pieces and we'll see what it looks like and then I might just go for it you know and uh, we'll take it from there. All right catch you shortly. Oh, having just told you what I just said you might be thinking what's going on here with these cardboard roofs. Well this is a mock-up um, these obviously not glued down by any means but I do need to work out um, the intersection between this roof and these two pieces and you can hopefully make out that that one is going to be joining at a lot lower height than that one is. That one's going to be sort of there, and obviously that one's obviously going to be considerably lower, because uh, that piece there I've put on the plinth now, and this roof was cut down um, the other day. So working that out, and I've worked out, what you have to do now is take a measurement across the hole of the top, from this point to this point and I've worked it out as 95 millimeters so I can then make a roof section one of these 95 millimeters long and then I've also then I've got to work out the distance from there to whatever that is duplicate it the other side and that gives me my overall dimension then and then it's just a case of working out the angles which I'll show you in shortly. Still haven't done that bit, but rather exciting moment. As I finish filming that section, the first print has come off the printer. Look at that. So rather pleased with that. And I've decided actually, I might as well just stick it to this piece of cardboard because then I've got an automatic template and I'm gonna try and stick this together. Because if you can see, that's quite thin. Whereas the roof section itself wouldn't be quite as thin. As, it'll be probably more the card thickness than anything else if I stick that to the top then I can replicate the the sort of concrete that you'd be putting in the edge there just to finish the tiles off ready for the soffits so which have also got me 3d printed by the way so yeah rather exciting moment but anyway I'm going to crack on with this bit now <laughs> I have to show you right now hopefully you can see that that's roughly how the roof is going to be so it's going to have quite a large overhang on one side and quite a small overhang on the other side now this is the piece I've cut out now if I put that on over the top there well one it's too long because it's got to be because it's got to meet where the pitch of the roof comes in okay so that's the point where um, that's the length it needs to be to be able to meet the two pitches coming in from either side but you'll also realize I've got to cut a part out of each of the corners there so it to physically get on because it's nowhere close to fitting on. So hopefully you can see from that, it really won't, you see, it's it's got to be able to, I've got to have a piece cut out each of the corners there. So what I've done is cut a short piece, place that over the top like that, and marked where the roof meets the top of the walls and then all I need to do is then transfer that measurement to these so you can see that and then cut off or center that to where it's got to be in there so all I do then is create rectangles on each of these to be so that it um, it fits on now to to make sure i get it in exactly the right place i'm going to put these pieces back on and just center it that way just to make sure that it does actually fit and then judge these lines coming down from that because i've got a feeling it'll need to sit probably around about there all right so that's the roof fitted so my next job now is to use these pieces which then fold put back into there and i've got to mark on the place where these parts, this roof touches that wall and that wall, and obviously the same both sides. 
and then where the actual apex of the roof comes and mark that position on and then cut that triangle out like that. You'll notice this roof sits lower. Um, that obviously does need to be pressed down, but they fit beautifully. It does seem to be a bit of a gap there, but remember the ridge tiles are going on top of that, so it should hide any of the gaps there. I'm... Right, so there's the building so far. So you can see I've now got all the roof on printed. I've got the flashing in just down there and obviously all the other parts as well. All the windows are fitted, the glazing's fitted. And I've also put in these uh, ridge stones as well. So the next stage now is the final details for this building. And to be honest, I'm just going to show you those at the end. You can see pretty much where I've been with this. So I will get those done and hopefully one or two other little bits around the actual station landscape itself. I'll catch you shortly. So there we are, almost the scene you saw at the beginning on the thumbnail. But if I take you around, you can see all inside there now. So all of this, clearly this um, uh, column work and structure has been 3D printed, painted. I've added the dinting side in there. It might be a bit wobbly, so forgive me. But uh, cycle racks there now and the fence going all the way around the outside. I've replaced that part, this piece of wall, because uh, it was just a bit too big. So I've replaced all that. Now a view from the other side. So what's happened here? Well, we've got these triangle supports going along there and you've got downpipes and gutters and obviously chimney pots, which I'll show you again in a minute. And you can see the roof there and the effect that that has i personally i'm really pleased with the way that's turned out and all the and uh the chimney pots these are all 3d printed now it's really difficult to see what's on the top so i've imitated the fact that the chimney pots have been removed and just concreted over but uh there's two there that have not and i've tried really hard to replicate those three pots on the top there, and these ones are round tubes type style, but uh, there we go. All right, looking at the other side now, so you can see I've got the information sign up there and a mock-up of the building. So it's obviously gonna be a lot smaller. It is literally just a car mock-up. There's nothing, no details on it whatsoever at the moment, but I did that purely so that I can add this fencing and the wall is a bit of a sweep, doesn't it? <laughs> right, I'll take you around the other side. So there. Uh, going along the platform. Got the signs on there now. Uh, they do look a little bit on the crude side, but it's end gauge, remember? And the camera doesn't always do things um, or give it do things just uh, do things justice. So I'll just bring you back along the line. Now, please understand that both platforms were double, double platforms at one point and the buildings are still there. I mean, it is physically possible I could put the building in this side. Um, bearing in mind, I'm just going to put a bank in here. So technically, there is space for that, but here... What I might do, I did talk about extending this by about an inch, which I, what I could do is maybe go a tiny little bit further, not much, really not much at all, indicate the platform and then the trees behind that. Um, I'll have to have a think about that because obviously it would take up space um, and I don't want to do too much of that, to be honest with you, um, but it was a double line as many of you um, have pointed out, and also a few of you have asked, am I gonna mo model the other platforms? Um, so you, you kind of got your answer there, to be honest. 
But anyway, I'm really pleased with the progress that's been made so far. And obviously there's still tons more to do. Uh, we've got fences to go along here and at the end of that platform there and the end of that platform there. I've obviously got to make this building in its entirety. Street lights need to be fitted. There's bollards down here. Um, what else is there? I've got a feeling there's other bits as well. All this and all this foliage needs to be built up. Trees put in and all that sort of stuff because it's a bit flat at the moment. Um, but it does give the impression what's actually happening. But uh, I think once all that's uh, done, and I've, oh yeah, these walls need weathering down, um, all that sort of stuff. Incidentally, they will be varnished and then weathered with some Nuln Oil type of thing um, so that they do tend to um, darken up a bit. And that's what I did with that. If you scratch build buildings out of card and you don't varnish them, there is a greater chance they will either burst apart or swell up or things will happen that, you know, it depends on your environment, to be honest. If you're in a damp environment, don't expect the buildings to last long. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, so there we go. I think I'll leave the video just there. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I will be back next week with the, hopefully, the last instalment on this. We never know. It might be another one after that. We'll see. Um, incidentally, I've received my Acura Scale 37. So look out for that on Friday. Um, when I'll do a comparison to the Backman and they are pretty much the same model so it'd be interesting to see how what the differences are so look out for spot the difference take care and I'll see you soon bye for now